Hello, my friends. Welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Today, we're going to take a little break from this week's testimony on the cell phone data, on the accident reconstructionist, on the Emmy, and we're going to go back in time to listen to some testimony between days 11 through 15. It's a summary video with nice, funny video compilations, nice slides, body language analysis. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to focus a lot on the people that were at 34 Fairview Road the night Mr. O'Keefe passed away, between the times that the prosecution is indicating that he did pass away. So after midnight, maybe until 2 a.m.-ish, is the time that the prosecution said Kara Reed was out there with her SUV. She reversed, hit him, left him to die, and these witnesses apparently didn't hear. So we're going to go uh, start with day 11 on this summary. Uh, the first witness I believe the prosecution called was Caitlin Albert. We're going to take a look at Caitlin Albert uh, and her body language and what were the triggers that made her do anything different with her body language, right? So to remember the body language is a fluid subject. Everybody's bodies uh, react differently. We all have our own mannerisms, but what we look for are clusters. When the person's face is just doing a couple of things at the same time. And with her especially, I found that when the defense attorney asked her about the dog, Chloe, did you take Chloe with you when you left the house after that, you know, like around 2 a.m. that she left? And her face was like so painful, disappearing lips, something is wrong. So we're going to take a look at that when we hear her clip. Some other things about Caitlin that were uh, interesting during her testimony is that she wasn't interviewed until August of 2023 by Proctor. Uh, so, you know, here we have an, uh, a slide with Chloe saying, help us, the Gemma Crabe. She wants to rehome me. But yeah, so the incident happened on January of 2022. Caitlin wasn't interviewed until uh, August of 2023. And she was at the house so that's weird right because if you have witnesses at, at a scene you want to interview as many witnesses as possible to hear the facts or hear their uh description of what happened so here on the second slide we're going to look at the face that i was talking to you guys about when she hears about chloe look at how uh scared uh panicky she looks in this face uh expression and she does the disappearing lips so big uh even bigger than the textbook shows so again lip compression reflecting stress or anxiety may progress to the point where the lips disappear as you can see here on this photo so let's take a look at uh the next slide which is going to talk about the difference between when she was in the this is a, a picture when she's being cross-examined, okay? When we play the video, you guys are gonna notice when she's wearing blue and she is talking to the prosecution, she, her whole body, her whole demeanor looks down, more relaxed. Her face looks like a different person. On this picture, she looks so stressed. There's so much going on on her face. She's literally doing like, deep breath to respond, which just shows a very stressful situation, right? So let's take a look here at some of the highlights of her testimony. She had, she was asked about her relationship with Katie. She says she arrived before Brian Higgins at 1210 to the house. She said there was no car there before she arrived with her parents. Uh, she saw nothing unusual when leaving around 1.45 a.m. She didn't see a sneaker, baseball, taillights, or a body. Says she did talk to... Tristan, her boyfriend, about him coming back and picking her up, which he says, no, we never talked about that. So we're going to go over the video and let the beginning of the night on January 28th, your plan was to go home early, correct? Correct. And you're, you plan to go home, get whatever rest or sleep you could get, and then wait for the call to go out plowing, correct? That is correct. And the plan when he left you was that you wouldn't see him again until after he was done with his plowing that morning, correct? That's incorrect. It may not have been set in stone, but it was definitely spoken about. And then that's what ended up happening. Yes. Um, have you ever 
Okay, so that doesn't make any sense, right? So the guy was going to, supposedly he was on call to wake up in the middle of the night and go plow. And she's saying, well, but he was going to go and then pick me up and then go back and then come back. Like, all right. So look at how stressed she is and the deep breaths, right? Have you told anyone that before, Ms. Albert, that the plan from the start of the night was that Tristan was going to make four trips total Sir, from Canton to there? Easton, Easton to Canton, Canton to Easton? Have you ever told anyone that before? I don't remember if I mentioned that to anybody. I would say it was around like 12-ish that we kind of said, you know, let's kind of head out um, and head home. I would say 12 -ish. So here's what I mean. I'm going to uh, turn the video volume a little bit down. But this is what I mean about her demeanor. Look, at, this looks like a different person. She looks relaxed. Her, you know, her facial expression is like uh, less. She was just, her whole face was like full and <gasps> gasping for air and here she's just more relaxed when she's talking to lolly about the 12 inch approximately now how long a drive is that from from the waterfall to the fairview i would say like five or six minutes give or take from the time that you walked in and bumped into colin sort of before you're at home um how long was it that he was in the home while you were i would say no how long was he in the home you again? minutes you didn't invite him correct i did not because you're not close friends with her at all correct i am not in fact you don't really like her very much do you Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. I do not. <laughs> you know, pieces of red plastic and no six foot two man, correct? Correct, but I also was not looking out my window. Okay. Let me ask you this. Did, did anybody in this courtroom ask you if you were looking out your window? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. That was an answer yeah, to a question so that nobody asked you, correct? Objection. Sustained. Now, at this point, what you pick you up? First of all, Annette is just like doesn't hear Lolly, like objection. He just keeps on going. And the other thing is that Annette is like a brute. He's like, he has no problem saying, Did I ask you that? Did anybody ask you that? Like, nobody asked you that. At 1 45 a.m. Did you bring Chloe out of the house with you to take your apartment? No. Okay. On January 29th, 2022. See, those were the disappearing lips that I was talking about. At extreme anxiety when she is talking just to pick about you up at 1 45 a.m chloe. chloe out of the house with you to take to your apartment no okay on january 29th 2022 what the body's saying yes before air stress when question about katie that the face the hair touching the pacifying behavior to relieve stress and also the big swallows we got the pursed lips, the annoyed, the disapproval. That's the body language in fast forward motion. When she's the blue shirt, like I said, in direct examination, look at how her demeanor is more relaxed. And when she's here in the white shirt, gasping for air, talking about Katie. The pursed lips, when you do this chewing, annoyed, disapproval, she's talking about Katie. As she hears the question, she keeps doing that with her lips. And the disappearing lips, which is something she does a lot during the cross examination, is absolute stress. So any type of face touching, hair touching, the pacifying behavior, the brain does it. We don't control it. Just to say, do something to relieve my stress because I can't get out of the chair. So you gotta touch something. You gotta touch your face or your hair or something. So here the disappearing lips again, and that's her when we fast forward. My brain is stressed, must pass what by. I uh, did you see what Ryan Higgins drove to get there? I did not. You did not see where he parked his vehicle? I did not. At some point you saw him inside the home, correct? Yes. Uh, who rode with you? Uh, my wife and my daughter. What other cars were in the driveway when you got there? I don't recall. Brian Higgins' Jeep was in the driveway backing up as we pulled in. So kind of in your way? Yes. In, in other words, you were gonna park you were gonna park him in. I didn't want he, I didn't want to block him in. Right, right. So he you waited until he moved his Jeep out of the way. Yes. And then you pulled in. Yes. Where, where in the Sir, did you miss Jen's timeline meeting? Because your daughter just said there was nobody there in the driveway. And you're saying Brian Higgins the was in the driveway. I believe I pulled to the left side of the driveway. I mean, I think pretty much everybody was wrapping up and leaving. 
Uh, I know that I, I beat. Please test. Is Karen looking at me? Do I look hot? Do I look hot? I think Karen, Karen likes Brian me. Likes and me. Nicole back to the house. <gasps> no, Higgins. No, Higgins. I don't think she's looking at you. <laughs> she's not looking at you, Higgins. So now we're going to talk about Caitlin's version of the 12, 10 a.m., right? Pay attention to this slide, guys. So we have the, the house here. It's 12, 10 a.m. This is when Caitlin, this is Caitlin's version of 12, 10. She says, we arrived there. Me, my dad, and my mom were in the car, right? So they have this black Ford Edge here. They're the first ones to arrive. There is nobody there. They just pull into the driveway, and that is Caitlin's version version of 12 10 a.m okay now this is brian albert's version of the 12 10 a.m look at how how different that is uh when brian albert talks about the same time he's saying that brian higgins was there with his plow at 12 10 that brian higgins uh was plowing and then he had to like re uh, reverse or move his car a little bit so that brian albert could park so we have here on top, we got Chloe inside the house yelling help because they're about to rehome her. And uh, what else? Brian Albert walked into the house at 12, 10 a.m. That's what he said during his testimony. Now, who else gave a version of the 12, 10 in testimony? Brian Higgins. Brian Higgins says he got there. He was texting John, right? 12, 10 a.m. Hey, John, it's Karen. I mean, are you coming here? Around 1220 is when he texted John. So Brian Higgins is there with his drunk face, drinking all the, the Jameson and ginger that you can have. And he showed exactly how he parked. The front of the Jeep was towards Chapman Street. The back of the Jeep was from, towards Cedar Creek Crest. And he was just playing with his plow before Brian Albert got there. But then who else was at the house at 12.10? Allie. Allie, guys. Remember, Allie texted Colin at 12.10 exactly saying, here, I'm outside. Come out, come out. That means what? Brian Higgins was outside. That means Brian Albert was arriving. That means Caitlin was arriving with Brian Albert. But Allie was there. She said no other cars were there. Her... uh her recollection was just that she got there she parked in the driveway she texted colin okay and then colin said as he was leaving he said as i was leaving i was walking out and ran into my uncle brian albert and julie i said hey 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 and brian albert was gonna say he saw colin inside so it's all a little bit uh, blurry, right? It's all a little bit um, inconsistent. Ellie also said Brian Higgins wasn't there. So who else? Now we go, to, we go back to Caitlin, right? Caitlin's 1.45 a.m. Let's take a look at this slide and see what do we see here. So first of all, Caitlin was asked about Chloe. Did you leave with Chloe when you left? She said no. Caitlin walks out of the house, you know, through the front door she's a little drunk she's had some some things to drink but she says she saw nothing unusual she didn't see tire tracks which brian jr saw tire tracks she didn't see a sneaker baseball no red tie lights no tire, tire tracks nothing tristan says he possibly parked uh here in the driveway because there was no nowhere else he couldn't agree to the time he couldn't agree to where he parked, he couldn't agree to anything, this guy, right? So that's Caitlin's version of 1.45 a.m. So if John O'Keefe was there at, in the lawn, maybe by the flagpole, and they say it's not that big of a house, or the, the lawn is not that as big as we think when we look at the picture of the house, that she could have possibly saw something, right? And we have, what, 45 pieces of tail light, we have tail light, we have the sneaker, we have shoes, we have his body right if it, if it happened two hours ago or an hour ago like around 12 30 ish how much snow would it have to have fallen to cover him in an hour i don't know 
So now we're going to go move on to Tristan, this guy here, who is Caitlyn's boyfriend for eight years that lives together with her. Can't commit. Can't commit, Tristan. I don't remember time. I don't know times. I'm just like, times? What? So he says he goes to the waterfall for a little bit. He had to work later. He went to 34 Fairview to pick up Caitlyn. And investigators only interviewed this guy. From the beginning of the May night, of 2024. Or... May of 2024, they did a Zoom with the DA. Insane, right? He's supposed to be there at the scene to have witnessed some things, but no, no, no interview for him. So let's listen to Tristan one more time and hopefully for the last time. January 28th, your plan was to go home early, correct? Correct. And you're, you plan to go home? get whatever rest or sleep you could get, and then wait for the call to go out plowing, correct? That is correct. Uh, the plan from the beginning was not for you to leave the waterfall, go to Easton, and then drive back from Easton to Canton to pick up Caitlin and to then take her back to Easton so that you could wait for the call for plowing. That was not the original plan, correct? No, it wasn't. No, of course it wasn't. So I, I apologize, Ron. No more, of course. Do you recall what I... time it was that she contacted you? No, I don't recall. You were at 34 Fairview Road in Canton at 1.45 in the morning or about 1.45 on January 29th, 2022, here. correct? I don't remember the time. Uh, was it wildly different than 1.45 in the morning or was it somewhat close to that? I'm not going to make up a time. I don't remember. Uh, was it 9 p.m. on the 28th? I don't. I don't remember times. So at all, if I, I ever, asked you, I ever remember times in your if life. You were there to pick up your girlfriend Caitlin at 9 p.m. on January 28th. You couldn't say if that's true or false. No, because I'm not making up a time. Okay, <laughs> so it could have been 9 p.m. that you were there, not 1:45 in the morning. I didn't say that. Well. You, you've you've just said that you can't rule out that it was actually 9 p.m. on the 28th, didn't you? Objection, Your Honor. Can you answer that? Did you say oh, that? Okay. I didn't say anything. I don't I don't remember a time. No, I, I understand. So I'm, I'm not going to make up a time. Hold, hold on. Only one person can yes. speak at a time. I, I just, I, I don't, I, it could have been later, could have been earlier. I don't know a time. Right, but it, it couldn't have been 9 p.m. on January 28th. Could it have been? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what, what time were you at the waterfall? I don't remember. I don't know time. I don't remember. Did you leave at 5 p.m.? I don't remember. Oh, oh come on. Yeah. Were you there at 5 p.m.? Could have been 5 in the morning. I don't know. 5 uh, in the morning? I don't remember where I pulled into. Did you pull in any place when you got to 34th there? Well, I had to pick my girlfriend up, so yes, I did. That's how I feel after watching Tristan. <gasps> ah! So, okay, fine. Tristan, never again. Hopefully, we'll see you. This is Sarah Levinson with this number 30th. She's celebrating Brian Alvarez Jr. at the house. The adults come in around 12.15. Around 12.30, Julie talks to Ryan, her brother. Tells Sarah she's coming to, he's coming to pick them up. But Gemma Cabe... Gemma Crave. She intervenes. They no, I'll take you guys. I'll take you guys. She says they leave around 1 30 a.m. to 2. Matt goes back inside to grab his jacket, which he denies later. They take Julie home, which takes five minutes. She was not interviewed until October, which is insane. Another person at the scene that was there after the midnight time, and she was never interviewed until months later okay now uh she was looking at the floor because when she testified she talks about her shoes and she didn't want to fall because her mom was going to yell at her so she was very specifically looking at the floor and she didn't see anything either so here is the clip that we're going to go to right now to watch sarah's compilation and i will be sharing these because uh some people have asked me to share the smaller versions of the link as well so i will be sharing these with you guys after i upload the full video 
give me one second to here we go her older brother ryan was coming to pick us up to take us home so she went out to talk to him prior to him arriving she, she said, said something, something to me, to me along, along the lines, lines of Ryan's, Ryan's coming, coming to get, to get us, us. Um, um, which Jen, Jen McKay. McKay. So it's a bit of a, a hysterical scene. scene. There's, nothing There's nothing evil here. Ah, ah. Said, said, when, when is that, uh, you have this yeah. conversation with Julie about your brother coming to you again. Around 12.30. Give or take. And which lane to the left or the right were the Albert cars? Or maybe they were in both. I believe both. both. Closest, Closest to, to the, the garage. garage. Okay, so they were pulled up closest to the entrance of the garage. Correct. And where was the McCabe's mm -hmm. car behind? Which which, which car? car? If you're looking, looking at, the, at house, the house, the lane, lane to the to left, the left, I believe. Okay. Now, when you first walked out of the Albert home, you'd agree with me that the front lawn was right in front of you, correct? Yes. yes. There were no obstructions blocking the view of that front lawn? No. no. And there were lights on uh, next to the Albert home front lawn, correct? Correct. And there was also a lamppost where the front walkway is, correct? Correct. Um, and between the two garage doors, there's also a spotlight, is there not? Correct. And you would testify that snow had started to accumulate, right? Correct. And against that white snow, did you see a black baseball cap? No. Did you see a black sneaker? No. no. Did you see a six foot two, 220 pound man sprawled out right in front of you on that lawn? No. Did you see 45, 45 pieces of red plastic? So I traveled that route on purpose, and um, as evidence revealed itself due to the natural melting of the snow, what presented itself? No. no. One piece of red plastic? No. no. So you saw nothing unusual on that front lawn as you walked out of that house, correct? That's correct. As Jennifer McCabe, Matthew McCabe, and Julie Nagel were walking toward the, the McCabe car, none of them pointed to the front lawn to direct your attention to anything, correct? That's correct. What, if anything, did you observe? Um, I did no, notice, notice um, mm -hmm. behind Sarah and Jen, um, I did notice a, like a, something out of the ordinary, um, like a black blob um, in the grounds by the flagpole. If you know about where in relation to the flagpole was this black object. Mm -hmm. In fact, you had testified that Matt McCabe forgot something and had to go back in the house. Correct? Correct. Which means he actually came out of the house twice that night. Correct? Correct. Cars, or maybe they were in both. I believe both, both. closest to, to the garage. Okay, so they were pulled up closest to the entrance of the garage. Correct. Which which car? If you're looking, looking at the at house, the, house, the lane, lane to, the to the left, left I believe. Okay. Now, now, when you first walked out of the Albert home, you'd agree with me that the front lawn was right in front of you, correct? Yes. yes. There were no obstructions blocking the view of that front lawn? No. no. And there were lights on uh, next to the Albert home front lawn, correct? Correct. And there was also a lamppost where the front walkway is, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and between the two garage doors, there's also a spotlight, is there not? Correct. And you would testify that snow has started to accumulate, right? Correct. And against that white snow, you saw nothing unusual on that front lawn as you walked out of that house, correct? That's correct. And... That's Sarah's testimony. Awesome, awesome, awesome.
So now going back to the slide here, where we see the slide that we were playing during the video, the showing Sarah's testimony, right? So she had um, the McCraves picking her up uh, outside, waiting for her. Her and Julie walk out, they're a little drunk, but now they can see the snow on the floor. Uh, Julie apparently goes inside the car. And once she's inside, she sees like this black blob. And she says, guys, there's something there. Nobody hears it. Nobody ever verifies that story from Julie. And this is where, I mean, the, the black Ford Edge is still there because that's Brian Albert. He did not move that car all night. And nobody saw a thing. And this is supposed to be around uh, between like 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. But probably around 1.30 because Caitlin was the last one to leave. And she said she left at 1.45. So when we continue going, the next person we're going to hear to on day 12 is Julie Nagel, friend of Brian Albert. She's going to give her account of the story. We're going to take a look at her body language as well. Uh, she does display some anger, um, some, you know, disappearing lips as well. She has this uh, motion she does, it's kind of like, uh, like cutting your neck or something. Uh, you know, so a lot of stress. But the, the neck one takes place when there's emotional discomfort, uh, doubt, or insecurity. We got the lip pursing again, which shows... Um, it's an indicator of what's being what's being said is being totally rejected, and then we got the lip compression, which is the classic disappearing lips, pursing lips, and then the neck is what we're gonna see a lot from Julie. So let's take a look at Julie's video compilation, see what you guys. As you drive by uh, home, what if anything did you observe? Um, I did notice um, behind Sarah and Jen, um, I did notice a, like a something out of the ordinary, uh, like a black blob um, in the ground by the flagpole. And uh, from where you were situated in the park, um, do you know sort of what, what was the, the lighting like over in that area of, of the yard that you saw by the flagpole? Um, it was pretty dark out, but the snow was kind of heavy at that point, so couldn't really see too much. But so the snow coming down at that point? Yes. And um, if you know about where in relation to the flagpole was this black object that you saw? Um, I would probably say like um, close to like the street, but like in their lawn, right kind of in front of the flagpole next to it. Now, um, and I was like, I don't know what it was. And then that was kind of really it. And that was sort of the end of the conversation in reference to that. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. This is just her body language being displayed in fast forward motion, so there is no uh, testimony here. Just to show you guys how her body changes, the fast blinking, the disappearing lips, the first lips, the touching of the neck, and all of those signs that she's playing here. Uh, the classifying behavior, she's itching her leg, press, right? And I mean, she's talking about this class. A lot, but we have not heard this story before. Nobody's backing her up on this story, so do we really believe that? Good afternoon, Ms. Nagel. Good afternoon. On January 28th of 2022, uh, you got to 34 Fairview Road at about 6 or 7 p.m.? Correct. And you didn't leave until 1.30 or 2 a.m., correct? 1.45 around there, yeah. Okay. Uh, you also never, ever told any investigator that this black object that you described was actually five feet or six feet long, correct? Correct, yes. The very first time you're now mentioning this testimony that this black object, as you describe it, was actually five or six feet long was just today, after 12 noon on May 14th of 2024, correct? Um. Lally asked me how big it was, so I just turned right now, yeah. Yeah, Lally, when you say Lally, you mean Mr. Lally? Correct? Yes, Mr. Lally, correct, Lally. yes. Mr. Lally just asked you during this trial, again, yeah. right before this jury. That's the first time you've ever been asked or ever given an answer as to how big that object was, correct? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, no. Did you review any report 
that was taken when the investigators spoke to you regarding this case before taking the stand today? No. Um, you've never testified um, in a grand jury regarding this case, correct? Correct. So you're approaching at the same time, is that correct? Uh, yeah, just about, yes. Where did that black SUV go? Uh, probably about kind of right in front of the house, I would say. When you stop um, in front of the driveway, about how far away from you is the black SUV that you saw? Probably a car or a car length in front of me, a car length and a half in front of me. What, if anything, was in between the truck, Ricky's truck, and the okay. black SUV in front? Uh, there's nothing, sir. And when you came out to the truck at the end of the driveway, what, if any, other vehicles did you see in the area of, of the house on there? Um, well, before when I went outside, I did notice another vehicle before my brother pulled up. No, he was like fully outside already. And then I went out and it was just Ricky's truck. Oh. And so at some point later, there was another vehicle that came up? Um, prior. Prior. Okay. Correct. So later? No, prior. So later? No, prior. <laughs> so let's take a look at Julie Nagel's slide and what did she testify to? So Julie Nagel says she goes outside to talk to her brother, Ryan Nagel. He's in the truck. The headlights are on. She gets out from the front door. He actually says she gets out from the side door, but that's besides the point. She goes outside through the front door. She uh, tells her brother, we're actually staying. Do you guys want to come in? He says no. And then she goes back into the house. Now, the thing that I noticed here is that she's telling Lolly the SUV was there when she was looking through the window, but it left before she went outside to talk to her brother. This is not when she saw the black blob. Apparently, she saw the black blob later when she was leaving with Gemma Cave around 1.30-ish in the a.m. But she did go outside to talk to her brother, and she also didn't see anything. So this is the time that the SUV, for her testimony, had already left. So again, if uh, Carrie had hit uh, Mr. O'Keefe by that point, everybody's wait. She's waiting for her brother, looking out the window. Brian Albert's looking out the window. Everybody's looking out the window, and nobody saw a thing. So very, very strange. So now we move on to her brother, Ryan. So Ryan's testimony is that he was at 34 Fairview around 12:45 a.m. He saw the SUV. Karen's SUV in front of him, kind of like how this picture is displaying. He's parked right there by the mailbox. Uh, the SUV is in front of him. He sees there's a woman inside. And then the SUV moves about three cars ahead towards Chapman Street. Um, this is what he testifies. So I guess this would be the time that that's the perfect time that Karen would have hit John O'Keefe, right? Because it was by the flag. Uh, this is where, you know, Ryan Nagel's right there, 12.45 a.m. He's right there watching. Now, was he um, was he interviewed? We're going to check if we see his interview date. But anyways, so this is his recollection of the scene. Brian Albert Jr. is inside with Sarah. They're actually looking through the window. He says his sister comes out from the side door and then... You know, it doesn't matter. These people are all drinking. So that's, that's not a, a huge deal. But this is now the slide where we are going to go over Brian Albert Jr.'s recollection, which is also a little different. I wasn't 100% sure on the time that he said maybe 12.15ish or between that and 12.30. He said he saw tire tracks and the truck was no longer there. So Ryan Nagel was no longer there. That's why there's an X. He did see Brian Higgins' uh, Jeep still there, and he did see the SUV and the SUV moving about three cars forward towards the flagpole. So what is even happening? Nobody can remember uh, anything. So let's hear the clip from Ryan Nagel's recollection of the date that supposedly everybody's there. Everybody's there. They're not interviewed. And they don't see it. So you're approaching at the same time, is that correct? Uh, yeah, just about, yes. Where did that black SUV go? Uh, probably about kind of right in front of the house, I would say. When you stop um, 
in front of the driveway, about how far away from you is the black SUV that you saw? Probably a car or a car length in front of me, a car length and a half in front of me. What, if anything, was in between the truck, Ricky's truck, and the, the black SUV in front? Uh, there was nothing, sir. And when you came out to the truck at the end of the driveway, what, if any, other vehicles did you see in the area of the house on Fifth? Uh, well, before when I went outside, I didn't notice another vehicle. Before my brother pulled up. No, he was, he was like fully outside, outside already when I went out. out. And it was just Ricky's truck. And so at some point later, there was another vehicle that came up? Um, prior. Before. Correct. About how long was it that you were at the hill I would say I was probably there, there hours, hour give or take. And do you know about you know, what time you left? Uh, probably, around probably around midnight. midnight. And when you left from there, where was it? So he left. I he went to pick up my sister Julie because she shot me a text asking for a ride. Julie and so you were at the hillside when you received a text from your sister. When he's at the hillside correct, correct, sir. Night, then he, she texts him. About how long was it after you received the text from your sister to the time that you sort of jump in the truck and start to go over the there? Probably 40 minutes or so. We kind of took our time. She said she didn't like, so she wasn't saying come now. She just right said, now. you know, when you get a second, you come pick me up and bring me home. Or when was it that the last person? The last person. Uh, I wouldn't know the ex I couldn't tell you the time. I don't I don't remember times. Um, well, the last people to leave were Auntie JJ, Uncle Matt, Sarah, and Julie. So about what time was it that you, uh, was actually that you left like, the home on Fairview when that particular Between 1.30 and 2 a.m. And you left uh, with your friend, Ms. Nagel, as well as uh, Mr. and Mrs. McCabe, correct? That's correct. Um, I don't know exactly what time that would be. I, I can't even guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember times. Yeah, so at some point, my friend Julie um, stood up and said, oh, my brother's outside. Um, her brother was there to pick her up. She went she outside went to, to talk to her brother, brother. Um, um, and so I looked out the window, window at that point. point. And she was she outside was talking to her brother, so his truck was there, and I saw another um, car there as well. No, he was like fully outside already, and then I went out, and it was just Ricky's truck. And so at some point later, there was another vehicle that came up? Um, prior. prior. Correct. Yeah, so I saw a truck, um, which was Julian Angle's brother's truck, I believe, um, and that was a little ways, almost like in front of the driveway um, of the house, and then a little ways in front of it, um, there was another car that I didn't, I hadn't recognized before. It was a dark SUV-ish, and that's all I knew about it and could see about it. Now, similar to yourself, uh, with anyone else from sort of the group of people, either in the kitchen or in the house, um, did you observe near a window or a door that was looking on that? Um, I believe my uncle Matt McCabe um, noticed the car outside as well. Um, well. The last people to leave were Auntie JJ, Uncle Matt, Sarah, and Julie. Your sister, Caitlin, is that Oh, oh yes, I'm sorry. She, I was just thinking of her as my sister, like with sibling. Um, so she didn't live in the house, so she was the last person to leave. And prior to her leaving is when your Auntie JJ, Uncle Matt. Had. Yes. yes. Yeah. What door and how did she? I would say the side door next to the garage. I went up through the front door. Yeah, she crossed through the lawn a little bit, but obviously walked down the driveway. As we were at the end of it. It's true that you said the second time you looked out, you saw that there was a black SUV that needed old pull work, right? Yes. yes. But the truck was no longer there. Sure, it seems like I said that then. Yes. She went, she went outside, outside to talk to her brother. Um, and so I looked out the window at that point. And she was outside talking to her brother. So his truck was there. And I saw another um, car there as well. Who was in the house the second time that you looked out the window? Um, it would have been my mom, my dad, um, Brian Higgins. How long did you stay at the Albert, Albert residence in total? From the time you got there to the time you left? Maybe like a half hour, less than an hour. And what time did you leave? Uh, it's supposedly still there. Say 12, 30, you said? I, th I think I said between 12, 30 and 1. one. And it was just Ricky struck. I walked down the steps through the little path um, down the driveway. And they were parked right in front of the driveway. So they were parked right at the end of the driveway? Yes. And they were parked right in front of the driveway. So they were parked right at the end of the driveway? Slimy lolly. Yes. yes. He's such a slime ball. He keeps testifying. It's unreal, unreal, unreal. So 
back to here. So we got that. Then we move forward to the next witness uh, from those days. We got Terry Khan. She is the uh, person who is going to actually test the DNA found in the shirt. She did not see, um, she did not find any dog DNA, but she did find pig DNA. Then we have uh, the state witnesses, 34, Heather, Ryan's girlfriend. We got 35, Richard Dentano. Now, these witnesses were also there, okay, at the time of the supposedly incident that happened at that time. Now, Heather did not see any damage to the vehicle or anyone exiting and going to the house, but she did see the SUV. She said the vehicle was running because the interior and exterior lights were on. She didn't see it moving again before they departed. So suppose that she left a uh, the she left the SUV there, right? She said she noticed a male and a female in the SUV. The female was driving, the male was in the passenger seat. So in this scenario, we have so many scenarios. In this scenario, supposedly Karen's there, John O'Keefe is in the passenger passenger seat. Either Karen left him there to go to the house, or after the kids left, Karen ran him over with her car. Either, either or, whatever. Pick your pick your 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 uh, your option here. Then we got Richard Dentano, and this is what he said. He was the one driving. He did not see anyone get out of the vehicle that all three previous witnesses have described. Danette is able to confirm that Ricky spoke to the feds in May of 2023 and the state police a month later in September of 2023. Then we have a little bit of the evidence that was collected in the solo cups. I'm just kidding. This is the swab, the shirt that was swabbed with the DNA. Here is Chloe again with the bacon saying, please, wasn't me. Help, don't rehold me. And then we also have the- Everything that we the, use this video where she says solo cup what what is sterile all of our tubes that we would use or once we do a collection we put it in a tube for the extraction process those tubes are autoclaved and uh, they don't have contamination they are sterile you wouldn't use a solo cup i'm sorry what i'm sorry what <laughs> so this guy if you guys remember him gallagher is the the one that he was asked, did you ever go into the house to search for evidence, the rest of the glass, anything? He's like, absolutely not. Did you search? Did you ask for consent? Did you ask for a warrant? Of course not. He's the one that asked a neighbor for the solo cups to collect the evidence. And here's Chloe again saying hello to everybody. This guy is like just, you know, the attitude of, of superiority of I don't have to investigate uh, go inside Brian Albert's house because he's a Boston cop. It's just the, the attitude. Is, if attitude. you have a source material and there's DNA over here and it's swabbed over here, you wouldn't expect this swab to detect that DNA. That's correct. Action, you're move to strike. So this is Lolly. <laughs> this is Lolly, like, because Lolly at this point of the trial, he was just asking so many boring questions and questions that are completely relevant to the case. And what's the basketball team score? And what kind of music was the band playing? And which sit did you sit in? Did you sit in the high table or the low table? What was everybody drinking? What was that? What was the relationship from Ryan Eagle with his ex-girlfriend? How long are they together? Are they coming back together? So now he's feeling the pressure because now he's actually talking about evidence that he is running at the time. But back then, when we were talking about this, his questions were completely irrelevant. And then when Jackson is asking about something relevant, right? Because the girl that took the swab, the DNA swab, she went like this on one side. She didn't take you know, multiple swabs of different portions of the clothing or everything. So she couldn't have possibly uh, uh, analyzed the whole shirt because the swab was just one area. So that's what he's asking her about. Then Lolly's like, wait, stop, objection. No questions that are actually relevant to the case here. And then your honor, with all her powers and magnitude and magnificency, she says, with all my powers, I'll let him have that. Mm -hmm were you provided about these two particular samples? I wasn't really provided any information. 
criteria include the time that something was touched? Yes. The place yeah, where it was touched? Uh, we don't document the place. Meaning it was taken out of this particular locker and put on this? Oh, yes. Uh, the, the person that manipulated those, those items or that, that item? Yes. Okay in my case notes and it's documented on our internal chain of custody. So there's literally multiple documents that dictate, I'm sorry, that, hey, that memorialize uh, the movement of that evidence, right? As it goes through our lab, yes. Right. And, and of our PDA. lab, but not everybody uh, else. Correct. Right? And I think you said on direct examination that that could come from a number of sources, including food sources, right? Correct. Bacon? Could come from dog My treats. dog loves bacon. Pardon me? Yes. Could come from dog treats. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, 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 dog treats that are pig ears, literally. Objection. Allow it. What's the problem with that question? I believe so. Um, Objection. Or it could be that the shirt that was the source material was contaminated and not properly preserved. I can't say where that DNA came from. You're not aware of any feral pig populations in Massachusetts, are you? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Out so now we're going to say, ah! Wait, Allie, wait, Allie, Allie. So that's, you know, that's what we're talking about. Days 11 through 15. Those were the witnesses so far. And then we have Allie McCabe coming in and she says the famous phrase, Colin was never at the house while John was at the house. So let's see that one. Oh, he's being harassed for, he was not at the house when John was there. So I drove him home. So he's, the people are harassing him, saying he was at the house when it's not true. When you speak about harassment, what, what specifically? Let's speak about harassment. So this is a little bit of, uh, about Allie. So she picked up calling at 34 Fairview Road at 1210. Exactly. Yanetti says, when you provided the screenshot, uh, did you, the state police ever ask to look at your phone? She says, I don't remember. Uh, Colin Albert wasn't in the house when J.O. was there. She breaks down uh, describing the harassment. And these are the text messages from Colin and Allie. And they're exactly at 1210 if you look all the way at the bottom. So remember, when she says here, there's a lot of people outside 34 Fairview Road at 1210. So which one is it? Which one is it, really? And then that's pretty much it because on day 13, we have Colin Albert testify. And for Colin, if you haven't watched yet, I have made a whole video on him, his whole testimony, his whole body language. I did a whole video just for him because I thought, you know, we had enough material for that. And then next, um, we're going to go over the testimony of Matt McCabe, but Matt McCabe uh also we'll get his own video because we had to do two videos for jennifer mccabe right so we got part one part two of jennifer mccabe please check it out and when i finally do the mccraves the, the whole family we're gonna have some fun we're gonna do jennifer we're gonna do matt and we're gonna cover some more off the alley uh mccabe's testimony as well in shock and Hara and Hara. I was shocked and I was horrified. So I just want to thank you so much. I wanted to make this shorter version of the video so we all have some of the facts of this testimony. Given on those days, I'm going to keep uploading the next summaries. Uh, like every time I do it, I do it like five days of testimony. So that if you guys forget something, just come check it out. Please check out my other videos. I have made body language videos on Brian Higgins, which is awesome. I did one for the McAlberts. I uh, did two for Jennifer McCabe, like I just said, and many more. I am uploading smaller video compilations for your requests. Thank you so much for in, uh, spending this time with me. I enjoy it very much. I'll keep you guys posted on the next live. Have a great evening, and that's it.